Hi guys, first of all, I just want you to know that my ID is Utility Main and I'm using Magic Class for PvE. It's just recent that I made Physical Set for Thor to test it out. With that said, feel free to comment anything related to Physical Class stats or any item adjustment suggestions so other viewers can get some ideas too. Now without ado, let's begin. First, let's know more about Thor's essential PvE skills. For his core passive Thor's arrival, it will work like this. As you can see, Mjolnir will attack random target dealing physical wind damage while using channeling skills. If his core reaches level 4, here's how it works. You can use non-channeling skills whilst using channeling skill. For the runes, just adjust it depending on your core level. If you have white blade runes, swap it for the thorn rune to deal more damage. For my item and cards, as I said from the beginning, I just made a physical set to test Thor. So this is the most sufficient physical item and cards available on my ID. So just adjust anything if you have better item or card options available for PvE. I'm using this offhand card just to unlock the Minoris Insight Ignore Deck so I can use different headgear that can help me deal more damage to summon monsters. For the accessory cards, there's a lot of option for physical class depending on the monster element or race. So just adjust it, depending on the monster if you want maximum damage output. For the Oracle Extract, my first choice was Windax because it's the cheapest but I don't have enough Extract Crystal. Anyways, here are some Oracle Extract options. Now let's head on to Stat Allocation. For the stats, just max out STR and luck for maximum damage output. Then distribute the remaining stats to your choice depending if you are using Zenubia card or Beautiful Ensemble. By the way, I already have Meal Bee here and original Will Juice because I lack physical penetration. Also a friendly reminder to always use consumables if you want maximum damage output. To be honest, I just tried to pump the stats close to minimum, or at least same as when I'm using Magic Class for PvE.
Just in case you are wondering, here's my handbook depot. For Ponat Museum Run, I used five original will juice and one original will barbecue to avoid getting insta-killed. Also remember to consume meal B and alloys for extra damage boost. Before attacking, use lightning power for 50% wind damage buff. At first, I don't use auto, so I can manually cancel the rolling thunder, so that I can use play dead for the attempt to cancel the seed. The only skill on my auto is rolling thunder because sometimes I keep forgetting to recast it again, and also so that it will auto cast whenever the duration ends. Pots power all the way because I don't have physical lifesteal cards to test. Nevertheless, I still managed to clear Komodo and Lost Isle Legend. So in my opinion, Thor deals tons of damage even with just minimal setup. The only problem for his skill is its random targeting. So it's a bit hard when I tried using it on Oracle Dungeon and Ponupe Secret Realm. But I think it's doable with the proper physical set. For my skill sequence, I usually start with Rolling Thunder followed by Storm Barrier, then Ultra Lightning followed by Lightning Cling, so that the monsters will stay at one place while getting damaged by Ultra Lightning. After that I use Trial of Storm, then use Ultra Lightning again to deal extra damage when dashing to Mjolnir. For the Rook phase, no need to use Lightning Cling to avoid long casting time because of the debuff. Plus, the Rook doesn't move anyways. <laughs> By the way, you can switch your accessory card to Maogwai card to deal more damage in Komodo and Lost Island second floor. Because they are both ghost elements. I'm still using 5 original Will Juice and 1 original Will Barbecue in here to avoid being one hit by the Rook skill. Also remember to rebuff lightning power to maintain maximum damage output because it only lasts for 60 seconds. For Lost Island first and second floor, I switched to 6 original will juice for more pen because you just need to kill the MVP fast. Remember to always check if you still have meal B and use consumables if they are already on cooldown. Lost Island first and second floor is easy. Nothing much to do but to burst down the MVP fast before they cast a skill that can kill you. No need to cancel your channeling skill when the MVP casted Sigil Ray. Just turn your back so you will not transform whilst you're still attacking with Rolling Thunder. For the third floor I switched back to 5 original will juice and 1 original will barbecue to avoid sudden death by the explosion or torrent. Put repair alloy in your item bar just in case because the MVP sometimes will break your gears. Personally I find 3F bit easy for Thor, maybe because it's easier to cancel the green spheres due to his AOE skill. Plus some of the boss for the second phase are water element so it's easier to burst. Overall, in my own opinion for Thor, he's very enjoyable to play, it's just he doesn't have built-in anti-fatal skill or lifesteal unlike Ronin or Wrath Greasy. But with just minimal setup, I finished Komodo and Lost Island Legend with only core level 4. So for those who have physical main ID and are still having second thoughts if you are going to purchase Thor, maybe this is your sign. <laughs> and that's all for the video guys. Hope you learned something. See you again in the next venture.